In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 As we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries of our faith, to hear God's word and sacred scripture, let us pause and examine our lives, see the ways in which we have sinned, and ask the Lord's forgiveness and strength. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Lord God, that we, your servants, may rejoice in unfailing health, mind, and body, and through the glorious intercession of the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, may we be set free from present sorrow and come to enjoy eternal blessedness. We pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him by whom we must render and since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. Let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The word of the Lord. Responsorial song. The words, Lord, are spirit and life. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The degree of glory of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear. Enlightening the eye. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Let the words of my mouth and the thought of my heart find favor before you. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus went out along the sea. All the crowd came to him and he taught them. As he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the customs post. <coughs> Jesus said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed Jesus. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners sat with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. Some scribes, who were Pharisees, saw that Jesus was eating with sinners and tax collectors, and said to his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus heard this and said to them, those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, as we gather for divine worship of Almighty God at the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, it's, it's one of those nice days of convergence, one of those nice days of things coming together. Uh, beginning of the week after the baptism of the Lord last Sunday, we once again re-entered ordinary time which is the longest of the liturgical seasons. It's even longer than Lent, it's longer than Easter and after Easter and all of that. Uh, it takes up the bulk of the liturgical year. It's also the Saturday, as in all Saturdays, in which we honor the Blessed Mother. Um, and there's a nice, again, convergence of coming together of ordinary time in the time where we turn our minds and hearts this morning once again to the Blessed Mother. Now, ever since Advent and through the Christmas cycle, we have been celebrating various feasts of the Blessed Mother. Have the uh, Annunciation, the Visitation, uh, we have, of course, the birth of Christ, uh, we have the Presentation in the Temple, uh, we have all of these times, the Blessed Mother is present at uh, the first of Jesus' signs in the Gospel of John, the wedding feast at Cana. Uh, Mary receives her son from the cross, the famous Pieta. There she is standing there with the beloved disciple. And she's also present at the uh, Pentecost, the first Pentecost, with the disciples in the upper room. And in God's good time, Mary will be assumed into heaven, body and soul, without death touching her. All of these things, one after the other, one after the other, one after the other, and yet, what's very easy to overlook is Mary in ordinary time. In ordinary time. That's where you and I spend the overwhelming majority of our time is in ordinary time. Which is in the daily routine, uh, the daily rounds, yes, the boredom, uh, the expectation, uh, all of those things that kind of stick life together is really an ordinary time. And <clears throat> Mary was able to have all of these wonderful experiences of God's presence because in her ordinary life, in the marrow, <coughs> in the marrow, you know, the bone marrow, in the marrow of everyday life. That's where 
we encounter God the most or we don't at all. All these big ceremonies and all these big things, that's all wonderful. Terrific, great, fine. It's in the ordinary things of life. It's in husbands and fathers who get up every morning and go to work, uh, provide for their family, who provide wonderful example, hopefully, for their children, who love their wives. It's for wives and mothers who make a house a home, who nurture their children and provide a place of love, a place of safety along with the husband. And husbands and wives who love one another in that nuptial union. But that happens, that has to happen every day. You know, uh, I once had a seminarian ask me, uh, Father, how, how do I know I'm going to be a priest 25 years from now? I said, I, I was teaching the seminary at the wall, in the wall. I said, well, I, I haven't put up uh, a table yet in front of the cathedral doing clairvoyant stuff. I don't have uh, fig leaves or tea leaves or whatever people use, or leaf palms and all of that. I, I had no idea. I had no idea you're going to be a priest in 25 years. But I know one thing. When you get ordained, if you're not a priest that day, I don't know what's going to happen to you tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen. you got to be a priest that day. Married people. Oh, I come waltzing down the aisle here. How do I know? My marriage is not going to end in divorce. I have no idea, neither do you. Unless every single day you're married once again. Every single day you love your wife, you love your husband, you raise your children properly. That's how. It's that daily grind. And we can imagine the Blessed Mother doing all the things that a wife and a mother uh, at that time did. Cooking, cleaning, washing, teaching, guiding. And yes, I can imagine there were times when she scolded Jesus. Because it's in the scriptures. When, when they found him in the temple, when he kind of wandered off, you know, he, you know, he was doing his own thing for people today do their own thing. And uh, she said, where have you been? You have greatly upset and filled with anxiety, your father and I. Because Joseph never speaks. Well, she's a Jewish mother, so naturally, he probably didn't have a chance to speak. Uh, yeah, every time he tried to speak, you know, he had duct tape on his mouth. Uh, and all of those things, the daily, the daily grind of life, and then that daily pain of having to let her son go. Don't you know I must be about my father's business? Started at around 12, but actually when he began the public ministry, it wasn't blue skies and green lights. He gave a first sermon at the synagogue in Nashville. And they threw him out. They were shocked, upset, angry. Many of his disciples were his disciples no longer because his sayings were too hard. They picked up stones. They wanted to throw him off a cliff. They drove him out of town. And yet Mary is that silent presence, silent presence throughout the ministry. And even more silent is Joseph, who we have no recorded words of what Joseph said. None. And yet Mary and Joseph were entrusted with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
And we see their presence in the way in which Jesus does the will of his heavenly Father. But that's the everyday grind of life. Uh, the, the everyday things that we find boring, routine, that weigh upon us. And they do. They do. And so many people, they, they, they want the, the novel, the new, the excitement. Ooh, if I can have something new to do. And then that new thing will become an old thing. That's the way it works. But it is in the daily grind of life, of being a husband and a wife, that you really find out what nuptial love is. It's in the daily commitment to religious life that you find out what it means to accept God's call to serve the church and above all to serve Him. Uh, it's in the daily grind of life that you become a better employee, you become a better owner, a better manager, a better executive. Not in some big fancy meeting in some big hotel and all that sort of stuff. Or some big diocesan meeting where they're all falling all over each other. Uh, and you have all of that. That's all fine and good. Eh, fine. It is in the daily. And the Blessed Mother is a magnificent example. She is the disciple par excellence because she says, be it done to me as you say. Can there be anything better that sums up the core of Christian Catholic discipleship? To be a true listener that God calls us every day to, whatever that is, whatever your circumstances. Be it done to me, Lord, as the angel Gabriel says. In a few minutes we're going to leave and uh, you'll enter on the side. It's called your everyday. And you go back to your house, your apartment, your rooms, whatever you do, I have no idea. But whatever you do, you're going to go back into it. You're going to be immersed in it till the Lord calls you home. But you're going to be immersed in it. And on this special day, and I think it is a special day, may we be one with the Blessed Mother and say, Lord, be it done to me as you say. There we find the Lord. That's where God speaks to us. God speaks to us. If God speaks at all, God speaks to us in our conscience. God speaks to us in the core of our being every day. Maybe we don't listen, but that's not God's fault. That's where God touches us, in the core of our conscience, in the depth of who we are fundamentally and essentially after this old body is long in a buffet for the uh, maggots and the worms. It's our soul. It's our soul. That's where God touches us. And that's where God speaks. And God speaks to each and every one of us today. Not only in this church, but on the other side of those doors. God is speaking to us deep calling unto deep. May we be one with Mary and saying, yes, Lord, I am listening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please stand for prayer. church 
May the grace of the Holy Spirit strengthen us as we work to bring God's message of love and mercy to all the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. For all elected officials in our country, may the Spirit empower them with justice and charity so as to conduct their work with fairness and truth. Let us pray to the Lord, 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 Lord. for those who are sick and those caring for them. May they find strength in God's mercy. Let us pray to the Lord, 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 Lord for our families and loved ones. May the light of Christ dispel any darkness and the peace of Christ resolve any discord. Let us pray to the Lord, 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 Lord. for those who have died especially for Sean Topachka. May our Lord greet them with loving arms for all eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. Heavenly Father, we present all of our prayers to you. You search our hearts and you know what we need. We know each day you give us your gifts, graces, and blessings. May we always be attentive with a listening heart and an open mind to what you call us to be and to do. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this bread to all. For the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this wine to all. For the divine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual dream. Let us pray. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God. The Almighty Father. <laughs> Receive, O Lord, we ask the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your son, no petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to praise your mighty deeds and the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo our thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things, and extended your abundant mercy from age to age when you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid and gave us, through her, the author of our salvation, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And so our voice is blown with all the choirs of our angels, angels, and saints as we pray. Holy, 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 By sending down your spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and 
entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim the death of the Lord and the resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Carol, our Bishop, all the clergy. Also, remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. And Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come.
Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Spirit, descend upon you and remain forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.